Hello and welcome back to the Peony Patterns YouTube channel. My name is Ashley and I am the Sew Along host here at Peony Patterns. Today we are going to be sewing the beautiful Clementine dress together. So Clementine is a pretty top and sundress that buttons up at the front. It features gorgeous crossover ruffled straps, an elasticated back bodice and also the sweetest ruffled pockets that are optional for the dress version only. The Clementine Sew Along was so generously sponsored by Smitten Cotton, who also gifted us the beautiful fabric that I will be working with shortly in the video to create my Clementine dress. So a huge thank you to Smitten Cotton. I will pop a link for their website in the description box of this video as well for you to check out their amazing range of fabrics. So we are now going to jump straight in and see all of the pattern pieces that I have cut and prepared ready for my Clementine dress. Then we will begin sewing. So here are all of my pattern pieces cut and prepared ready for my Clementine dress. So firstly, you will need four front bodice pieces cut. Two of those will be in your main fabric and the other two will be in your lining fabric. They are cut as a mirror image set of each other. You will then need four back bodice pieces. They are also cut as two mirror image sets. So you will need two of those in your main fabric and the other two in your lining. In both the front bodice and the back bodice pieces, it is really important to make sure that you have marked all of the notches on the side seams under the arm's eye on all eight of those pieces. Then I have two back elastic casing panels. One of those are in my main fabric, the other is in my lining. I then have two strap pieces cut, so they will be in your main fabric. I have chosen to use a coordinating fabric for mine, so I am using the fabric that I'm using for my lining. The strap pattern piece is cut on the fold. Then I have my skirt cut, so you will need one of those cut for your back skirt piece and then two for the front of the skirt. Now, if you are choosing to add the optional pockets, you will then also need the pocket pattern pieces cut as well. So for those, I have two of my lower pocket pieces cut. I then have two of the upper pocket pieces cut, two pocket lining pieces, and then also the two pocket ruffle pieces as well. So for my pocket, I have chosen to use the contrasting fabric again, and then for the ruffle, that will be in my main fabric, so those pockets really stand out. Now you will notice that for the skirt, there is no actual pattern pieces to print and cut, and that is because the cutting charts for the skirt in either the top length or the dress length is on page 13 of the Clementine pattern. Then finally, you will need elastic cut for your straps. So the cutting chart for that is on page 14 of the pattern. So I have cut two pieces of elastic for my straps. Then also the elastic for my back elastic casing panel. Those measurements for the back bodice elastic is also on page 14 of the pattern as well. And the amount of elastic pieces that you will need to cut will vary depending on what size Clementine you are making. So that is everything that I have cut and prepared ready for my Clementine dress. So to begin the construction of our Clementine dresses, this first step is optional, but is definitely recommended. And that is to stabilize the front bodice buttonhole area by adhering a one and a half inch wide strip of lightweight fusible interfacing to the wrong side of our left piece of the front bodice lining. So I have my left front bodice lining piece here with the wrong side facing up. So I have already gone ahead and cut my interfacing that is now one and a half inches wide and I have cut it so that there is half an inch to spare at the bottom and also the top. And I will then be positioning that also half an inch from the center front edge. Making sure when adhering your strip of interfacing that you are in fact actually adding it to the center front edge by checking where your notch is. So we would have marked our notches at the side seams of our 
bodice pieces and that will then determine where our side seam is. So once you've double checked that, then you can make sure that you are in fact adding your strip of interfacing in the correct position. Once you have double checked that, you can then go ahead and press your interfacing in place. Once you have pressed your interfacing in place, you can now pop that aside, ready to now begin the construction of our straps. Now we're going to begin the construction of our straps. So I have both of my strap pattern pieces here. We are going to take one of those and fold that in half lengthwise, right sides together and press. Then repeat that for our second strap as well. So folding that in half, right sides together and lengthwise and pressing. Now, once we have both of our straps pressed in half with the right sides of fabric together, we are now going to head to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to stitch down the long raw edges on both straps, making sure to leave both of the short raw ends open. So do not stitch along those. So once you have then finished sewing down along the long raw edges on both straps, we are now going to trim those seam allowances down to a quarter of an inch. Once you have then gone ahead and trimmed those seam allowances down, we are then going to press those seams open. Now making sure when we are pressing these seams flat that we also ensure that the pressed seam is now going to be aligned along the centre back of the strap. So the seam will be directly in the centre as we are pressing. This is a really important step of the construction of these straps. So once you have finished pressing both straps, the center of those seams should now be directly in the center of your strap. As you can see here, I have pressed my seam open so that we can now see that seam and it is running directly down the center of both straps. Now we are going to turn both of our straps out the right way. So you can use a turning tool um, like a bodkin or even a safety pin to do this. Once we then have both straps turned out the right way, we are then going to press the straps flat, ensuring to keep that seam directly in the center of our strap. So once you have then gone ahead and pressed both straps, ensuring that that seam is now directly down the center of the back of the strap on both of those, we are now going to go ahead and sew two long parallel lines along both straps. These will be three eighths of an inch from each of the long sides on our straps. So you can either now use an air erasable pen and a ruler to draw those in three eighths of an inch away from each of these long edges. Or alternatively, you can use the seam guide on your sewing machine needle plate as a guide to sew both of those. Ensure that when you do sew these, you also do backstitch at the beginning and the end. So I will be going ahead now and sewing mine and we'll come back to show you exactly what that will look like once sewn. So once you have then gone ahead and sewn those long parallel stitch lines down both long edges of both of your straps, this is now what each strap will look like. So you can see that I have a stitch line along the whole entire long edge, three eighths of an inch away from that side edge and then also from this side edge as well. So ultimately there we have now formed a casing ready to then thread our elastic through shortly. So now to prepare our straps for the elastic and then ultimately to be attached to our dress, we are going to be placing our first strap facing the right side up towards us. So the side with the seam line is on the underside of the strap. Now we are going to be taking our remaining strap, placing that directly on top 
right sides together so that the seam line on the opposite strap is now facing up towards us. So I'm just flipping that around and I'm going to align the two short raw ends together and just pin those together once aligned. Now, beginning at the bottom right hand corner of the strap casing, we are going to be drawing a line at a 45 degree angle towards the top edge and moving away from this short end with an air erasable marker. So I will go ahead and draw mine to show exactly what that will look like. So once you have gone ahead and created a line at a 45 degree angle from that bottom right hand corner of the strap casing, we are then going to carefully remove our pins, but ensure that our straps do not move and that they are still directly aligned at this short raw end. And we are then going to carefully trim off that short end of the strap casing along the marked line that we have just created. Once again, making sure that our straps do not move in this process. So once cut, you will now have two straps that are a mirror image of each other so that they are now both right sides facing up so that those seam lines are on the underside and they are both cut at the same angle but a mirror image of each other. So now we are going to go ahead and thread our elastic through our strap casings. So prior to threading our elastic through, you will want to give your strap elastic pieces a few good stretches and then just recheck the length to ensure that that has not stretched from the original length. If it has, you can simply just trim it back down to the correct length that is needed for your particular size clementine that you are making. Once you have done that, we are then going to thread our elastic through each of our casings. So you can go ahead and simply just use a safety pin like me or a bodkin if you prefer. So we are going to start by threading our elastic through the short straight raw edge of our straps through that center casing that we have now created. Now, once your tail end of elastic meets that short raw end where you begin threading it, we are then going to stop when it is completely aligned with that short raw end. We are then going to head to the sewing machine using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance to stitch that in place, making sure to back stitch at the beginning and the end as well. So once you have then secured your elastic in place, we are then going to pop a pin in that will be approximately one inch to the inside of that stitching just to secure the elastic and help keep the fabric flat in this area as it will then make it much easier to attach into our bodice later. So as you can see, I've just popped a pin in that is approximately one inch from that stitch line. We are then going to continue threading our elastic through to that short angled edge. So once the raw end of your elastic reaches the bottom of that 45 degree angled opening at the other end of your strap, we are then going to pop a pin in that will be one inch approximately from that angled raw end of the strap casing just to secure our elastic in place. You can then go ahead and remove your safety pin or bodkin. Now it is really important to not stretch the strap casing out to distribute the elastic and fabric yet. So once you now have that end of elastic pinned in place as well, we are going to head to the sewing machine to secure that elastic in place using a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance from that raw angled opening, remembering to backstitch at the beginning and end. Now making sure to still keep these pins in place at either end of your strap, we are then going to go ahead and trim that small protruding triangle section of elastic from that angled end of the strap casing. Once you have done that, we are then going to repeat all of those steps for our second strap. So once you have then repeated that for your second strap as well, you can gently just slide the gathered fabric down along the elastic without stretching it completely and distributing the gathers evenly.
Once done, we can then give both our straps a press. So once we have then pressed both of those straps, we are going to be making sure that we do not remove the pins at this stage yet, but we are going to be popping those aside, ready to begin constructing our bodice. Now we are going to begin the construction of our bodice. So firstly, we are going to be working on our back bodice pieces. Now when it comes to working with the back bodice pieces and also the front bodice pieces, both the main and lining pieces, you will need to make sure that you are always concentrating on where your side seams are. So these will be the ones that you would have already pre-marked your notches in. So I have used an erasable pen so that it can be seen on camera there. So they are on the side seams. So it is very easy in this step to accidentally rotate the pieces incorrectly and then have the bodice pieces positioned incorrectly. And then ultimately the dress will not fit as it should. So make sure that when you are now doing the following steps and working on your bodice, you are always keeping those notches in mind and checking where they are positioned. So wherever those notches are, that will be your side seams. So now to begin the construction of our back bodices, I have my two back bodice main pieces here, as well as my back elastic casing in my main fabric as well. So to start off with, we are going to be taking one of our back bodice main pieces, placing that right sides together with our back elastic casing panel. So we'll be placing those right sides together and aligning the raw center back side edge of the back bodice main piece, which is the side opposite to the side with the notch. So the notch is facing in towards the center away from where we are going to be aligning these edges up at. So once you have then made sure that the notch is on the opposite side of your back bodice main piece and is located towards the top edge here, we are then going to align the two raw ends here and pin. Once pinned, we are then going to repeat that with our second back bodice main piece. So making sure again to flip that so that the notch is facing towards the center of our back elastic casing panel. And then the opposite short raw end will now be aligned with the opposite end of our back elastic casing main piece. We will be pinning those as well. So now that we have both of our back bodice main pieces pinned to our back elastic casing main piece at those short raw side edges, making sure that once again, I can't stress it enough that your notches are on the opposite ends that are now in towards the center. We are now going to head to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to sew where we have pinned. So once you have then finished sewing both of those side edges, we are now going to trim the seam allowance down on both sides to a quarter of an inch. Then press those seams open. Once you have then finished pressing those seams open, we are now going to pop that aside and repeat the exact same steps for our back bodice and back elastic casing lining pieces. So now we are going to repeat all of those exact same steps for our back bodice lining pieces and also our back elastic casing lining piece as well. So making sure to be placing those right sides together, we are going to be aligning the short raw end on one side of our elastic casing panel to one of those back bodice pieces, making sure that wherever our notch is on our back bodice piece that we are working on the opposite side of that and that the notch is towards towards the top. So we are going to be placing those right sides together, along those raw edges and pinning. Then repeating that with the opposite back bodice piece as well. So right sides together, making sure that we are working on the opposite end away from that notch, aligning those raw edges and pinning. Once pinned, we are now going to go ahead to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to sew where we have pinned. Once sewn, we are then going to trim the seam allowances down to a quarter of an inch. Then go ahead and press those seams open. 
Once we have then pressed those seams open, we are going to pop our lining pieces aside and bring back our back bodice main pieces. So we are going to be placing our back bodice main pieces right sides facing up, ensuring that the notches are also located towards the top of the back bodice as well. Now we are going to be using an air erasable marker to mark half an inch out from the left seam that joins the back elastic casing and the left back bodice piece together. We are then going to place a mark along the top raw edge of the left back bodice piece. So we are going to be measuring out half an inch from that seam and placing that mark on the left back bodice piece then repeating that for the right back bodice piece as well. So measuring half an inch now from that seam out towards the right back bodice piece. Now bringing back our straps, we are then going to be placing the corresponding strap onto the left back bodice piece. We are going to be placing those right sides together. So the side with the center back seam will now be facing up towards us as that is the wrong side of our strap. So we are going to be placing that in position, now aligning the point of the strap that has the wider angle to the outside of the half an inch mark so that the strap now angles inwards towards the back bodice elastic casing. So my half an inch mark is on the inside here and I've then placed my strap accordingly. We are then going to pop a few pins in. Then repeat that for our second strap. So place that in the exact same position, but obviously on the opposite side, making sure that it is also right sides together with our back bodice pieces. So now we will be looking at the wrong sides of both of our straps where we can now see that center seam. So once we have those in position, we are now going to head to the sewing machine to baste both straps in place using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So once you now have both straps basted in place, we are now going to bring back our back bodice lining and place that on top of our back bodice main pieces, right sides together, sandwiching our straps now in between both fabrics and also making sure that our notches are also aligning so that our notches on our lining pieces are now also towards the top of our back bodice pieces as well. We are then going to align the top raw edges and pin, making sure that I like to start by aligning up those side seams and pinning there first. Once you now have pinned your back bodice lining to your back bodice main pieces, sandwiching those straps in between, we are now going to head to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to sew along that top raw edge where we have pinned. So once you have then finished sewing that step, you can then go ahead and open up your back bodice lining and back bodice pieces apart and remove those pins that were holding your elastic in place. We are then going to press that seam allowance towards the back bodice lining. Now the next step is optional, but we can now go ahead and understitch that seam allowance to the back bodice lining if you wish. I will go ahead and do mine now to show you what that step will look like if you do decide to go ahead with that. So if you have decided to go ahead with that optional step of now understitching your seam allowance to your lining, this is now what that will look like. So I have only stitched on the side where my lining is and that has now held that seam allowance in place. We are then going to turn our bodice out the right way and press. Now we are going to pop our back bodice aside, ready to begin working on our front bodice. Now firstly taking our left front bodice lining piece and placing it right sides up, we are going to be using an air erasable marker to mark half an inch in from the top corner of the arm's eye and place a mark along this top raw edge of the left front bodice piece. So making sure that we are working on the top raw edge by checking where our notch is positioned. So our notch again will be the side seam of our bodice. So then measuring in half an inch from this top corner at the arm's eye and then placing a mark half an inch in from there along that top raw edge. 
We are then going to repeat that for the right front bodice lining piece as well. So making sure we check where our notch is positioned and that we are working on that top raw edge. Measuring half an inch from that top corner where the arm's eye is and placing a mark. Now we can pop the right front bodice piece lining aside but keep our left side there. Now we're going to bring back our back bodice that we have already prepared with our straps and we are going to be placing that right side facing up so that our lining fabrics will now be right sides together. So we are then going to position our left front bodice lining piece so that we can now place our right strap over and align that with the mark that we have just made on our left front lining piece. So now our strap will actually be in position with the wrong side of the strap with that seam now facing the right side of our lining. We are then going to align the inner edge of our strap with that half an inch mark and then align the short raw end of our strap with the top raw edge of our front bodice lining piece. We are then going to pin our strap in place. Then repeat those exact same steps for the second front bodice lining piece, making sure that we have that in the correct position again so that the notch is on the side seam and the mark that we have just created before is now at the top there. We are then going to be positioning our strap the same way we did here, so positioning the inner edge of our strap against that mark that we have created and making sure that the short raw edge of our strap is aligned with that top raw edge of our bodice lining piece, pinning that in place. So now we have both straps crossed over and pinned to our front bodice lining pieces with the wrong side of our strap towards the right side of our lining pieces and our back bodice piece here is right sides facing up towards us. Now, once we have both of those straps pinned in place, we are going to head to the sewing machine using a quarter of an inch seam allowance to baste those in place. So once you have now basted your straps to your front bodice lining pieces, we are now going to locate the front bodice main pieces as well. So we are now going to take one of our front bodice main pieces and match that up right sides together with the corresponding front bodice lining piece. So making sure that we are checking where our notches are as well. So I have mine there. So that is then going to be my side seam where I can match that up with the notch on my front bodice lining piece. We are then going to align the raw edges around the arm's eye, the top raw edge, and also the center front. Then we will pin those in place, ensuring that the straps do not become twisted at all. Once you have then pinned the corresponding front bodice main and front bodice lining pieces together, up the center front, the top raw edge and then also around the arms eye. We are now going to head to the sewing machine to sew where we have pinned using a half an inch seam allowance. Once sewn we are now going to clip the corners and also the curve being careful to not clip through any of the stitching. We will also be trimming the seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch as well. So firstly to clip the corners. Then you can go ahead and trim the seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch and then clip the curve of the arm's eye. So ultimately you will be clipping in towards that seam. Like so, making sure to not cut through it, but just by making a few snips in towards that stitch line, that will help that curve sit nicely when turned out the right way. Alternatively though, you can go ahead and use pinking shears if you prefer. Then we're going to turn our bodice out the right way. Gently pulling that strap out and you can go ahead and remove the pin now at this stage. You can also then go ahead and gently push those corners out. 
You can now also go ahead and give your strap a gentle stretch to now distribute the elastic evenly. Then you can go ahead and give that front bodice a good press. Once pressed, we are now going to repeat all of those steps for the opposite front bodice piece. So we now have our remaining front bodice lining piece here awaiting the main fabric to be attached. So I have my front bodice main piece here. We are going to be placing that right sides together, making sure to align our notches so the notches are at the side seams. We will then be aligning the raw edges around the arm's eye, the top raw edge and also the centre front and pinning. Once pinned, we can now head to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to sew where we have pinned. Once sewn, we can then clip those corners, trim the seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch and then also clip the curve or alternatively, pinking shears can be used. Then turn your bodice out the right way Remove the pin in your strap, gently pull on the strap and you can give it a gentle stretch and then gently push the corners out. Then we can go ahead and give our bodice a press. So once we have now finished pressing that side as well, we are now going to position our clementine bodice like so so now we're looking at the right side of our fabric for all bodice and strap pieces we are then going to simply separate the lining and the main fabric apart for the back bodice like so and then also for our front bodice pieces as well these ones will be a little bit trickier because they are attached at that centre front seam. Now we are going to take one of our front bodice main and lining pieces over to the corresponding side of the back main and lining pieces. So matching our main fabric to main fabric and lining to lining. We are going to start by aligning the seams and pinning. Then aligning the raw edges and continue pinning down both sides from there. You will also notice that all of your notches will now be matching up. So that is now one of our front bodice main and lining pieces pinned to our back bodice main and lining pieces at the side raw edges. We are now going to repeat that for the second front bodice as well. So flipping that over right sides together with our back bodice main and lining pieces matching up that seam and pinning then continue by aligning the raw edges and pinning those together so once we now have both of those side raw edges pinned together making sure that our straps are crossed over still but are not twisted in the process we can then go ahead using a half an inch seam allowance to sew where we have pinned. Once sewn, we are then going to press all four of those seams open. Then we can turn our bodice out the right way and press. Now is also a great time to quickly double check that your straps are crossed over at the back, but that they are not twisted before proceeding. So now we are going to be creating the elastic channels on our back bodice ready for elastic. The amount of guidelines will vary depending on what size you are making, and you will find a chart on page 40 of the Clementine pattern that will show you how many guidelines you will need to draw and how many pieces of elastic are required for the particular size that you are making. So for me, I am making a size 7, so I will need to draw in 8 guidelines, but it will vary, as I said, depending on what size you are making, so make sure to refer to the chart on page 40 before proceeding. 
Now to create our first guideline, we are going to begin by measuring down three eighths of an inch from the top sewn edge of our back elastic casing panel. And we'll be placing a mark along the left side seam where the back elastic casing joins the left back bodice using an air erasable marker. We will then also repeat that over at the right side seam of the back elastic casing panel as well. Then using a ruler and an air erasable marker, we can then draw a straight line connecting those two marks together. Then we are going to continue measuring, marking and drawing the required amount of guidelines for the size being sewn by measuring down half an inch from this first line and then continuing to measure down half an inch from each previous line for each new guideline. Once you have then used a ruler to connect the marks and create all of your guidelines required for the size that you are making, there should now be a minimum of three quarters of an inch to one and a half inches of fabric remaining between the last guideline and also the bottom raw edge of that back elastic casing panel. So once you have then drawn all of your guidelines in, we can now head to the sewing machine to sew along each of those, making sure to backstitch at the beginning and end. Once you have then sewn over each of those guidelines required for your size, now we are going to thread our elastic through that back elastic casing panel. You will want to just pre-stretch each bit of elastic by giving them a few good stretches each and then re-measuring each of those to ensure that they haven't stretched from the original length. If they have, you can just trim those down back to the correct length that is needed for your particular size. Now prior to threading your elastic through, a quick tip is to pop a mark that is half an inch from the short raw edges of elastic and then that will help make it a bit easier to see how much elastic should be extended past and secured at the ends of each channel. So we are going to be leaving the top row of casing empty so that will then create a ruffled effect like the straps and we'll be threading our first piece of elastic either with a safety pin or a bodkin through that second row of casing. Also make sure to keep an eye on the tail end of your elastic as you will want to catch that before it fully is pulled through. So you will want to ensure that half an inch of that is left extended out and then we will secure that in place. So the mark that I drew in that was half an inch from that end is now aligning with this seam. So I'm going to stop threading that through. So now leaving half an inch of elastic extended out past the end of the elastic casing panel. We are now going to head to the sewing machine to secure that elastic in place by stitching in the ditch of the side seam. So stitching directly in the center of that seam that already exists to now secure that elastic in place with half an inch of elastic extended past that point. Once you have then secured that in place, we are then going to continue by threading our elastic through to the opposite end. So ensuring that we have left half an inch of elastic extended past that side seam, then popping a pin in, then we are going to head to the sewing machine to stitch in the ditch on this side to secure that end of elastic in place as well. So once you have then stitched in the ditch on the opposite side to secure that end of elastic in place as well, you are going to then continue threading your elastic through your elastic casings, making sure to leave every second row of casing empty. So the first row is empty. We have then threaded elastic through the second row. We will now leave the third row empty and then continue threading from the fourth row onwards. 
Now, once the tail of your elastic starts reaching the opening where you began threading through, you will want to make sure to leave half an inch extending past that side seam. Then we're going to head to the sewing machine to stitch in the ditch to secure that. And then we will continue threading and then do the same on the opposite side until we have used all pieces of elastic. So once you have then finished threading all of your pieces of elastic through, remembering to leave an empty channel between each row of elastic, you will then want to stretch the back elastic casing out to allow the elastic to be distributed evenly. And then you can give your elastic casing panel a bit of a press. Now we are going to go ahead and create our buttonholes on our left hand front bodice piece. So the buttonholes can be left until the completion of the dress if preferred, but it can be done now to save the buttonhole foot being caught on the waist seam when the skirt is added. If you would prefer to add snaps though, you can definitely do that when the dress is completed. But for those of you who would like to go ahead adding the buttonholes now, we will be creating those. So we'll be creating three to four vertical buttonholes on the left hand side of the front bodice. The buttonholes should be placed three eighths of an inch from the center front here and the top buttonhole should be placed approximately a quarter of an inch from the top of the bodice and then the bottom buttonhole will be placed one and a quarter inches or one and a half inches from this bottom raw edge of our bodice. So buttonhole placement comes down to personal preference and it is something that you can experiment with. So I will go ahead now and mark out the placement for my buttonholes and we'll come back to show you exactly where they will be positioned. So I have popped a few pins in to mark out where my buttonholes will be positioned on my left hand front bodice piece. So the first one will be a quarter of an inch from the top of my bodice. The bottom one will then be one and a quarter inches from the bottom raw edge of my bodice. And then I have found the center and then marked out my third buttonhole. So depending on what size you are making, you may need more if you're making a bigger size, but that is my three marked out. And then they will be sewn three eighths of an inch from the center front here. So I will go ahead now and create my three buttonholes. Then we'll come back when they are completed. So I have just gone ahead and created my buttonholes on my left front bodice piece. So whether you have decided to go ahead and add the buttonholes now or not, you will now be looking at your completed bodice. So if you have decided to not add your buttonholes yet, then that is completely fine and you can go ahead and add those when the dress is completed. Or alternatively, you can use snaps if you prefer at the end as well. Now, prior to beginning the construction of our skirts, we are firstly going to construct the optional pockets. So firstly, I have my two pocket ruffle pieces here. So we will be working on the pocket ruffles first. So to start those, we are going to press those in half lengthwise and the wrong sides of fabric together. Now, once pressed, we are going to head to the sewing machine to sew two rows of gathering stitches along the top raw edge of the ruffle. We will be sewing the first row a quarter of an inch from that raw edge, and then the second row will be three eighths of an inch from the raw edge. So we can now go ahead and sew those two rows of gathering stitches along that top raw edge of both of our pocket ruffles. Once you have then sewn your two rows of gathering stitches along that top raw edge on both of your pocket ruffles, you now want to bring back your lower pocket pieces. So make sure that before going ahead with this step that you have this pattern piece up the right way. So it is very easy to turn those on the wrong angle and then attach your pocket ruffle on the wrong side. Um, so make sure that you have that positioned the right way up. So I have the top of my lower pocket main piece here. We are now going to gather our pocket ruffles up to be the same width as the top raw edge of our lower pocket piece. 
then repeat that with your second pocket ruffle. So once you have then finished gathering both of your pocket ruffles up to be the same width as your lower pocket pieces, we are now going to begin by aligning the top raw edge of our pocket ruffle to the top raw edge of our lower pocket piece and pinning those together. We will also be leaving half an inch at both ends of our pocket ruffles ungathered, so make sure to keep that in mind when pinning. So as you can see, I have pinned my pocket ruffle to my lower pocket piece at the sides there and then have also popped another pin in about half an inch from the ends to ensure that they both stay ungathered in those areas. Now I will continue to distribute those gathers evenly and continue pinning that pocket ruffle to the lower pocket piece. Once you have then finished pinning your pocket ruffle to your lower pocket piece, we are then going to repeat those steps for our second pocket ruffle and lower pocket piece. Once you have then pinned your second pocket ruffle in place, we are then going to head to the sewing machine using a quarter of an inch seam allowance and a basting stitch to baste both of our pocket ruffles in place, making sure to have left half an inch ungathered at both ends of your pocket ruffle pieces. Once you have then basted your pocket ruffles to your lower pocket pieces, we are now going to attach our upper pocket pieces as well. So I have my two upper pocket pieces here. Now we are going to be placing those right sides now together with our lower pocket piece and sandwiching our pocket ruffle between. So we will be aligning the bottom raw edge of our upper pocket piece to now the top raw edge of our lower pocket piece. Then we are going to pin that in place once aligned. Once you have then finished pinning your upper pocket piece to your lower pocket piece, sandwiching your ruffle in between, we are now going to head to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to sew where we have pinned along both pockets. So once you have then finished sewing and have attached your upper pocket piece to your lower pocket piece, we are now going to open the pocket up so that now the ruffle will be facing up towards the upper pocket piece and we are going to press the seam allowance down towards the lower pocket piece. Once pressed, we are now going to head to the sewing machine to top stitch the seam allowance to the lower pocket. So top stitching just underneath the ruffle on top of the lower pocket piece. Once you have then top stitched along that lower pocket piece, now securing that seam allowance down towards the lower pocket piece as well, we are now going to attach our pocket lining pieces. So I have both of my pocket lining pieces here. We are now going to take one of those, placing it right sides together with our pocket that we have already created aligning all four raw edges together. Now I have gone ahead and marked out a two inch section along the bottom edge of my pocket lining piece using an air erasable marker as this is the section that I will leave open to then turn our pocket out the right way through. So once you have aligned all four edges we are going to pin our pocket lining to our pocket. Then repeat that for our second pocket. Once you have then finished pinning your pocket lining piece to the pocket that we have created so far, right sides together, we are now going to head to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to sew around all four of those raw edges, but making sure to leave a two inch gap at the bottom of our pocket unsewn, and that is where we will then turn our pocket through shortly. Once you have then finished sewing and attaching your pocket lining, we are now going to go ahead and clip the corners on both pockets and also trim the seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch. 
So we'll be firstly clipping the corners and making sure to not clip through any stitching. Then we are simply going to go ahead and trim the seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch on all four of those seams on both pockets. Once you've then finished trimming the seam allowance down, we are then going to turn our pockets out the right way through the hole down the bottom. Once we have then turned our pockets out the right way, we are going to gently push all four of the corners out on both pockets to a sharp point. Then once we have finished pushing all four of the corners out on both pockets, we are then going to press our pocket well, ensuring that the seam allowance at the opening here has also been pressed neatly inside of the pocket. Once you have then finished pressing both pockets, an optional tip is to then use a little bit of fabric glue to help keep the bottom seam opening sitting closed and in the correct position whilst the pocket is then being attached to the skirt in the next step. So as I mentioned, that is an optional step, but will definitely help just holding the pocket sit correctly by making sure that that opening remains closed. So I have gone ahead and just popped a little bit of fabric glue in both of those openings to make sure that they remain closed for the next step. Now we are going to be positioning our pockets on our two front skirt pieces and attaching those. So I have my two front skirt pieces here. Now make sure at this stage that you do have your front skirt pieces the right way up and that you haven't twisted those sideways. So firstly, we are going to be folding the front skirt pieces in half widthwise. So here is my top raw edge. Once folded, we are then going to press to create a center memory crease. Once pressed, you can then unfold your skirt piece and then repeat that for the remaining front skirt piece as well. So fold that in half widthwise and press. So now that we have done that and unfolded both of our skirt pieces, both of our front skirt pieces will now have a memory crease right down the center. Now, for the next step of attaching our pockets to our skirt pieces, the pockets will be aligned horizontally over the memory creases on the front skirts. So you will find a chart on page 53 of the Clementine pattern that will then determine the vertical pocket placement. We can then measure the required distance for the size being sewn from the bottom raw edge up that memory crease and place a small mark using an erasable pen. So for example, I am making a size seven. So according to the chart on page 53, the distance between the bottom raw edge and the bottom of my pocket will be six and three quarters of an inch. Then I will repeat that for my second front skirt piece as well. Now working on just one of our front skirt pieces, we are going to take one of our pockets lining side down. So the lining is now right sides together with our front skirt piece. We are aligning the bottom edge of our pocket with the mark that we have created. We are then going to center the pocket horizontally over the memory crease and then pin the pocket in place, making sure that the pocket placement is straight and correct before proceeding. So once we then have one of our pockets pinned, we are then going to repeat those exact same steps for our second pocket and second front skirt piece. Once we then have both pockets pinned in place, we are now going to head to the sewing machine, carefully top stitching the pocket to the front skirt. We are going to begin sewing one side of the pocket across the bottom edge and then up the other side of the pocket making sure to backstitch 
at the beginning and end. Make sure to also do not sew across the top edge of the pocket so that that remains open. So once you have then finished top stitching and attaching your pockets to your skirt, this is now what that will look like. So I have top stitched around those three edges of the pocket, which is now attached that to my front skirt pieces. So you can now go ahead and press those creases out. So I have just popped my two front skirt pieces aside and I now have my back skirt piece here fully opened out and right sides up. Now bringing back one of our front skirt pieces, we are going to be placing that right sides down with our back skirt piece, aligning the two short raw ends and pinning. Then we are going to repeat those exact same steps with our second front skirt piece on the opposite end of our back skirt piece. So I'm now placing my second front skirt piece on top of my back skirt piece, right sides together and aligning the two short ends and pinning again. So once you now have both front skirt pieces pinned to either end of your back skirt piece. We are now going to go to the sewing machine using a half an inch seam allowance to sew where we have pinned. And then we will also be using an overlocker or a zigzag stitch to finish off those raw edges. Now is also an ideal time to add in any size and care labels as well. So I have gone ahead and added mine. Now I'm going to go to the sewing machine to sew and create our side seams. So once you have then finished sewing your side seams and have also finished those raw edges with an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, we can now press those seams towards the back of the skirt. Then we are going to begin the hemming process of our Clementine skirt. So the next few steps do involve hemming long raw edges by a quarter of an inch. So to assist in making these steps quicker and easier prior to hemming, the raw edges can now be finished using an overlocker or a zigzag stitch if you like. So this step is completely optional, but can definitely make the hemming process much easier. So it is highly recommended. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead now and overlock both of my center front raw edges on both front skirt pieces and then also the entire bottom raw edge of the skirt. So if you would like to go ahead and do that step, you can now go ahead and using a zigzag stitch or an overlocker, finish those three raw edges now. So if you have decided to go ahead with that optional step, you will now have both of your center front raw edges finished and also the bottom raw edge of your skirt as well. So I have gone ahead and done mine, but if you have decided to not go ahead with that step, that's completely fine and you can simply just measure up a quarter of an inch instead. So we are now going to start with our skirt facing wrong sides up. So we are looking at the wrong side of our fabric. Now starting on one side of the front skirt pieces, we are going to be pressing the raw or the finished edge if you've chosen to do that of the skirt center front towards the wrong side of the fabric by a quarter of an inch and pressing. If you have gone ahead with that optional step of finishing the raw edge off, you can now use that stitch as a guide when pressing. We will then repeat that step for the opposite front skirt piece as well. Once you have then finished now pressing up both of the center front skirt edges, we are then going to press the bottom edge of our skirt up by a quarter of an inch wrong sides together as well. So once again, you can simply measure up by a quarter of an inch, or if you've chosen to finish that raw edge, you can now use that stitch as a guide. So 
So once you have then finished pressing up, now the two center front edges and also the entire hem of your skirt. So we are now going to be working with the skirt facing right side up. So I have one of my center front edges here and the bottom edge of my skirt here. We are then going to take the previously folded center front edges, folding them now back right sides together by one inch and pressing. Now, once I have then pressed that originally folded center front edge back on itself, right sides together and press that by one inch, I'm now going to pop a pin in just towards the bottom edge of the skirt. And then we are going to repeat that for the second center front edge as well. Then I'm just going to pop a pin in towards the bottom edge of that side as well. So now that we have both of our center front edges originally folded wrong sides together by a quarter of an inch and then flipping them back right sides together and pressing them a further inch, we are now going to measure up one inch from the bottom folded hem of our skirt and draw a horizontal line at the one inch mark on both sides. So using an air erasable marker, I have drawn a horizontal line across one inch up from the bottom hem of my skirt on both center front edges. Now we are going to head to the sewing machine to stitch along the lines, making sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end. So once you have then sewn across those lines that we drew in, one inch up from that folded edge of the skirt, we are now going to flip both of the folded center front edges to the wrong side of the skirt and push the bottom corners out nicely on each side. You will notice that the bottom edge will automatically now begin to flip up, creating a one inch hem now along the bottom of the skirt. So once you have now flipped both of those center front edges out and have also pushed the corners out, we are then going to press the center front edges now one inch towards the wrong side of the fabric and then also press our hem up by one inch along the bottom edge of the fabric as well. So once you have then finished pressing all of those three edges now towards the wrong side of fabric by one inch. So in total, you still have the original fold of a quarter of an inch towards the wrong side on all of those edges. And then you have folded them a further one inch now towards the wrong side of the fabric as well. So I have my two center front edges folded in and also the entire bottom edge of my skirt as well. So now we are going to head to the sewing machine to edge stitch the sides and also the hem in place. So you will firstly be starting on one of the center fronts, sewing down and when you reach the corner, you will then pivot and continue sewing across the entire bottom edge to create the hem. And then once you reach the second corner, you will simply pivot again and then sew up that side. So I will go ahead now and edge stitch mine in place and we'll come back to show you what that will look like. Once you have then finished edge stitching, this is now what your skirt will look like. So you will have both center front edges folded in towards the wrong side, as well as the bottom edge of the skirt creating our hem. So when you um, reach down to the corners. As I mentioned before, you will simply pivot and turn and then sew along the bottom raw edge and then the same when you reach the second corner for the second um, front skirt piece as well. So from the inside, this is what it looks like. So it gives a beautiful, clean finish. Now we are going to create our buttonholes for our skirt. 
So if you have decided to wait and complete your buttonholes um, when the dress is completed or you are adding snaps, then you can simply then skip this next step. So when creating our buttonholes, it is all about personal preference and it is something that you can experiment with. So some people may prefer to space their buttonholes and buttons out more on the skirt compared to the bodice. Um, it is definitely personal preference. So I prefer to keep mine the same distance or at least similar distance. Um, so when it comes to creating our buttonholes for the skirt, the first buttonhole at the top should be placed three quarters of an inch from the top raw edge. And then the last buttonhole will be positioned two to three inches from the bottom edge of our skirt. And they will all be placed three eighths of an inch from the center front here. So I will go ahead and mark out the position for my buttonholes and we'll come back when they are ready to then be sewn to show exactly where I have positioned those. So I've gone ahead and popped some pins in to show where my buttonholes will be placed on my left front skirt piece. So as I mentioned, I like to keep a similar distance with how I've positioned the buttons on my bodice. So I have gone with the measurements between my buttonholes on my bodice to then create the buttonholes for my skirt. So keeping in mind that the first buttonhole will be three quarters of an inch from the top raw edge, the last buttonhole will be placed two to three inches from the bottom edge of our skirt and then place the rest between there accordingly. And then also keep in mind that they will be three eighths of an inch from the center front. So I will go ahead now and create my buttonholes using those placement marks. So once you have then gone ahead and created your buttonholes, we are now ready to gather and attach our skirt. So now to gather our skirt, we are going to be sewing two rows of gathering stitches around the entire top raw edge of our skirt from one center front around the back and then around to the other center front. The first row of gathering stitches will be a quarter of an inch from the top raw edge. Then the second row will be three eighths of an inch away from the first line of gathering stitches. So I will go ahead to my sewing machine now to sew both of my rows of gathering stitches. Then we'll come back ready to gather and attach it to our bodice. So once you have then sewn your two rows of gathering stitches around the entire top raw edge of your skirt, we are then going to bring back our completed bodice and open that up and lie it completely flat. Now we are going to use those gathering stitches to gather our skirt to be the same width as our bodice. So once you have then finished gathering your skirt to be the same width as your bodice, we are now going to place the gathered skirt over the bodice right sides together. Now we will then begin aligning the top raw edge of our skirt to the bottom raw edge of our bodice. Also making sure to align the edges of the center front bodice and the center front skirt pieces. So I like to start pinning there. Then pinning the side seams of our skirt to the side seams of the bodice. So these will be where the front bodice meets the back bodice pieces. From there you will then continue by distributing the gathers evenly between those areas and continue pinning your skirt to your bodice. Now when it comes to pinning your skirt to your back bodice where you have the elasticated panel, you will want to stretch the back elastic section out slightly whilst doing so and then continue pinning the skirt in place. So once you have then finished distributing those gathers and pinning your skirt to your bodice, we are now going to head to the sewing machine to sew where we have pinned using a half an inch seam allowance. Then we will also finish that raw edge off using an overlocker or a zigzag stitch. 
So once you have then sewn your skirt to your bodice, making sure to slightly also stretch that back elastic casing whilst sewing the skirt in that section. And then once you have also finished that raw edge using an overlocker or a zigzag stitch, you can then go ahead and remove any gathering stitches. Then we are going to open our dress out the right way and press that seam allowance now up towards our bodice. Once pressed, we are then going to head to the sewing machine to top stitch that seam allowance now in place. So we'll be top stitching at the bottom edge of our bodice and that will now hold that seam allowance up towards our bodice as well. So once you have then top stitched that seam allowance in place up towards your bodice, now we are going to attach our buttons to the right side of our dress. So if you are yet to still create your buttonholes, you can go ahead and do that now. Or if you are adding snaps, then this is the best time to add those as well. So if you are adding buttons, to match the buttonholes that you have already created. We will now be using the buttonholes on the left side of the dress as a guide to now mark the corresponding button placement on the right hand side of the center front bodice and skirt. So I will go ahead and now attach my buttons and we'll be back when that is then done. Once you have then gone ahead and attached your buttons or added snaps if you prefer, then you are now looking at your completed clementine dress. Congratulations on now completing your beautiful clementine dress. I hope that you have enjoyed today's video and sewing along with me. If you would like to join in a sew along in real time, you can join our Facebook sew along group where we actually split the construction up of each pattern over a matter of days where we actually then sew each step alongside each other. And there are always amazing prizes to also be won just by simply participating. You can also join our main Peony Patterns Facebook group as well, where you can then share any photos of your makes using Patterns by Peony Patterns. So I'll pop a link for both of those groups in the description box of this video. So another huge thank you to Smitten Cotton for sponsoring the Clementine Sew Along and also a huge thank you to you all for joining in. I hope to see you all again very soon for another Sew Along.